Servus and welcome to Flo's German Kitchen. I'm Flo, this is my kitchen and I show you how to cook the German way. Today we're going back to my really, really early childhood days. Today we're gonna cook Saure Rädler. Saure Rädler is a Swabian dish from the southwest of Germany and with Saure Rädler it is pretty much the similar story to what I've told you about Linsen und Spätzle. This is a recipe that I remembered from my childhood days that I kind of forgot over the years and when I thought about what I can cook and present to you here it suddenly sprung back to my mind. Saure Rädler, that was just a wonderful thing but I had no idea how to cook it. And then my dad was sorting out old stuff and he gave me this. This is a pretty old recipe book especially about recipes from the area where I was born in the southwest of Germany, Swabia, Württemberg. And I checked and yes, I found a recipe for Saure Rädle in the book. But I tried it and I realized no, this is not exactly what I remember, but it gave me the right idea. Then I did some adjustments and kind of recomposed it until I thought, okay, now it's great and I can present it to you. So here we go, saure Rädle. Let's start cooking. What we need is potatoes. These are cooked and I peeled them already. Um, I have quite some amount of diced onions. I have a good amount of bacon, uh, some flour, some butter, beef stock, bay leaf, cloves, salt and pepper, and of course, a good guzzle of German beer. <sighs> Wunderbar. First thing we do, is we fry the onions and the bacon. And I start with the bacon so that it really can release some fat. And then I enter the onions. What I do is I just let it sweat for some time until it starts to uh, build up a dark coating on the bottom of the pot. And then I'll deglaze it with the beef stock. And while this is still frying, I must tell you that I've forgotten a very, very important ingredient. This is called Saugerädle. Sauer means sour. Uh, so this is a sour stew and therefore it needs vinegar. This is uh, apple vinegar. You can also take wine vinegar. It doesn't need to be anything fancy, just vinegar. So you can see the coating begins and that's the point where I deglaze. Uh, this is about one and a half liters of beef stock. Uh, yeah, I just take the whole thing. In the end, I will need it anyway. Um, also, I add two pieces of bay leaf. I have some cloves. And I keep some of the vinegar because you can really adjust it to your personal taste if you just want to add a little when it's already on your plate. Some people like it more sour, some people less. So I don't put in the whole thing. What happens now is that this boils for some time while I do other preparations. So I put this one in the stove uh, behind me and we'll go on with the preparations here. What I've done in the meantime is that I sliced the potatoes uh, into, yeah, slices or as the Swabians say, Rädler. Um, they're about half a centimeter thick, not as thin as if you we're making a potato salad or fried potatoes. Just, yeah, can be pretty rough. Next thing we're gonna do is Eibrennerde, uh, as the Swabians say, or in more formal German, Mehlschwitze or Einbrenne. Um, in English, well, actually it's a French term, it's called Roux, uh, that we 
take to thicken the stew later. What I do for that is that I heat up some butter. You can also take uh, vegetable oil or something the like. But of course, butter has just the wonderful, well, buttery flavor. When you're working with butter, make sure you don't use too much heat uh, because you don't want it to get brown before you've even added the flour. And that's the next component. A roux is a mixture of fat and usually all-purpose flour, sometimes starch. So we add it and this was around 30 grams of butter. And now you just add flour until the mixture gets a pretty doughy consistency. And now is the point where it's already, well, not just allowed, but actually supposed to turn a little brown because the flour will develop some yeah, roast flavors and some roast color as well. Yes, this is what I want. I'll put it aside because I'm gonna need that later to thicken the stew. But it's a good thing to have it prepared in advance so that you can just use it when needed. Yeah, all the preparations are done. Um, this still needs to boil for some more time, so I'll just enjoy myself and a good guzzle of beer. Wunderbar, lovely and refreshing. The soup is back and the first thing I do is that I pick out the cloves. And the bay leaves. Because, yeah, I can smell that it's already got a pretty clovey flavor. One is left, come on. Don't try to hide, I'm gonna get you anyway. I will. Ah, here we are. I got them all four pieces of clove and two pieces of bay leaf, hunting season's over. So this is boiling again. We are already approaching the finish line. Next thing is to add the potatoes. Just make sure you don't splash the soup over your shirt or over your hands. It can be painful. Yeah, I just boost that up uh, so I don't have to wait too long. I just don't like waiting even if I have a good beer with me. Although it makes it easier. One more thing before we reach the finish line. Um, early on, I told you that I had to make some adjustments to the recipe in this wonderful book. Uh, one thing is that the recipe here did not have bacon. And I definitely remember that in my childhood days, this had a lot of bacon. Actually, when I look at it right now, I think I should have taken even more. So bacon just really adds a wonderful flavor to it. So I'll reduce the temperature a little and we start thickening the whole thing. You can see that the butter <laughs> looks a bit like peanut butter has hardened a little but never mind just add some Have it boil for a while. 
and always observe the consistency. This can definitely take some more of it because in the end you don't want it to be soupy you really want it to be very creamy very a very yeah thick let's call it stew for some reason i don't like to add water to something that i've cooked before so what i'm trying to do is just add the roux bit by bit to approach the consistency that i want in the end but then we're running out of that so let's see if this is enough yeah while this is thickening up i might as well get myself another beer some fun fact about a roux and bavarian dialect a roux means shut up This looks wonderful already. I'll give it a try. Mm. Yeah. Need salt, quite a lot of it. And as I love pepper, I'll just add lots, 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 and lots of it. Also, it can take some more vinegar. Yeah, whatever. I had the perfect amount of roux. I had the perfect amount of vinegar. <laughs> Might get the impression that I've done this before. I reduced the heat. I let that simmer for a while because I have a special guest. As I'm far from being a vegetarian, I always like my Seudewürstler Wieners in the Saure Rädle and I give it some more time to heat up these wonderful sausages and again enjoying myself and a good beer. Oh, I love it. So here we are, it's done. And it looks wonderful. This is just the consistency that I wanted. Not soupy, but also not too thick. Here are the wonderful wieners. Always sounds funny, I don't know why. And I always like to put some parsley on it just for the looks and oh speaking of parsley you must have a look at this i mean that looks like a really really poor guy it looks like it's yeah <laughs> living in a desert but this has been here for weeks and now i still got some fresh leaves of parsley for my saure rädle dude you're a survivor i'm gonna keep you for as long as you want in my house here we go i can't wait to taste it mm. yeah this is so so creamy it's got that that freshness of the vinegar but also it is it is salty it's got the flavor of the bacon so it is a really hearty thing it's hearty and fresh at the same point also there is my wonderful wieners in it no fork for that yeah it's always the perfect combination some people in Swabia they even serve spätzle with it I think that's a bit too much but this is yeah wonderful hmm <laughs> so again I'm at the point where I don't want to stop eating because this is just so lovely if you enjoyed the video tell your friends about my channel of course you subscribe give me a thumbs up and celebrate German cooking cheers on Sauri Redler
wunderbar.